Late 1963, the nation's public school children gained a new champion, a former school teacher, now president, named Lyndon Johnson. As a young man, Johnson had taught in Texas in a school that served the impoverished children of Mexican-American farm workers. 38 years have passed, but I still see the faces of the children who sat in my class. I still hear their eager voices speaking Spanish as I came in. I still see their excited eyes speaking friendship. I had my first lessons in the high price we pay for poverty and prejudice right here. Johnson believed that an equal chance at education meant an equal chance at life. His war on poverty included a wide-ranging series of federal programs aimed at helping disadvantaged students, from Head Start to low-cost college loans. Education would also be a focus of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. This federal law banned discrimination on the basis of race or ethnicity in all federally funded programs, most notably public schools. Congress passes the most sweeping civil rights bill ever to be written into the law and thus reaffirms the conception of equality for all men. Five hours after the House passes the measure, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 is signed at the White House by President Johnson. There was a carefully thought out strategy involving a carrot and the stick. The Civil Rights Act said, among other things, that states and school districts could lose their federal funding if they refused to desegregate their schools. The Civil Rights Act then uh, was the stick, the threat of losing federal funds. The carrot was a significant increase in federal funds that came in the form of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965. In its first four years, the Elementary and Secondary Education Act provided an unprecedented $4 billion to aid disadvantaged students. Johnson signed the bill with his grade school teacher looking on. It represents a major new commitment of the federal government to quality and equality in the schooling that we offer our young people. Most southern school systems ignored the 1954 Brown decision, but suddenly when money got involved in it, the federal government had the power then to police local school systems. They could go in and say, are you integrated? And if you're not integrated, we're going to cut off your funds. Well, Johnson was from Texas. <laughs> Johnson understood uh, Southern society. He understood uh, white recalcitrance, white resistance. He knew uh, the history of that region, and he knew what he was up against. He knew you couldn't ask Southern states or Southern communities to give people choice, to integrate. That would be very, very naive. Pressured by the president, new federal laws, and the civil rights movement, the South finally gave way. Eight years after the Civil Rights Act, 91% of Southern black children would attend integrated schools. In that period in the middle 60s to the early 70s, we took a society that was like South Africa, an apartheid society where everything was defined by race in 17 of our states, and we made it the most integrated part of the United States. And that was a huge accomplishment, accomplishment very few democracies have ever done in peacetime. Bye.